cash flow, can't, Shannon. That's the that's it's always the key, right? Cash like, is king, right? Cash is king. <laughs> cash leakage is is like the opposite of king, though. We're going to learn about that in today's show because that's yeah, it's fascinating. Uh, the, it, it's amazing to me. There's some you know technology available that I really had no idea even existed, and. As a small business owner, man, I, when I was doing some research for the show uh, in preparation for the guests that we're having on, I, I was just like, oh, am I, I was just like mind blown how, you know, great the this solution would be for small business owners. And see, I wasn't even thinking of it as a, on a cost saving level, but even more on a, a person to person level. And it helps avoid so many uh sticky issues in the office with your accounting department, HR. I think it's great. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. If you can, and you'll learn more about the product here, but essentially it helps you control who gets to spend what and when without yeah. having and to where. breathe down and where without having to and breathe where. down people's yeah. necks. Yeah. And, yeah. and so it, it's, it's a solution by technology. You know, I always, in, in our Mac Geek Gab show, we always talk about, well, you know, parenting by technology, Maybe that's not like if you need to employ parenting uh, technology to parent your kids, you might be missing something here. Right. There, there's like. Right. some, But but this is one of those scenarios where I feel like and, and like a lot of those lessons are true with your employees, too. Like if you've got a problem with an employee using technology to fix it or to to isolate it uh, is not necessarily the right thing. But this I feel like is the exception to that rule. I really like this is a I think this is a great thing. So I'm, I'm I do too. And, and I love yeah. listening to, you know, we don't often get the, you know, CEOs uh, on the show. We're right. kind of focused on founders and small business owners, that kind of thing. But, uh, you know, Guido had such a good story and some really great lessons about, you know, his life and his background and, and his and, and one of the things I thought was really great was when he talked about when I asked him that best mistake question that we always do yeah. just, just some really good lessons today. Really good lessons. Yeah, for sure. No, it's great stuff. Uh, also great stuff is a new sponsor today and that is direct mail for Mac at directmailmaccom slash SBS. We all know, even though we don't necessarily practice what we preach and we'll get to that, but we all know that email marketing is a fantastic way to grow our businesses. But most of the tools out there for creating and sending campaigns just aren't that easy to use. So I'm going to use that as my excuse. Well, sort of as to why I'm not all that good at email marketing. But if you're a Mac user like me, then there is this fantastic app called Direct Mail. And it's built specifically for the Mac. You get all your email marketing done in half the time because it takes advantage of all the great Apple technology you already know and love. So there's no more waiting for a slow web page to load or fumbling with a browser. We have used direct mail in the past in, in several of our businesses. And I will be honest, when we've been using it, we've been really good about keeping up with our email marketing. When we stop using it, we're not so good. So there you go. Like... <laughs> do like me, but don't stop using it. Just keep using direct mail for Mac. And it's cool. They have two plans. You can either do a pay as you go, kind of like buying postage stamps. You buy, you know, X number of thousand emails to send and, and then you can send them whenever you want. Or if you're sending more regularly and we should all be sending more regularly, you can buy into a monthly subscription, which then gives you an unlimited amount. So you're not locked in unless you want to be. And that's beneficial to you that you get to choose. They've got all these really nice templates that are customizable and look great on all your devices. And they, their customer service is staffed by real humans, not chatbots. So you can send your first email campaign today with a free download of direct mail. And because you're a small business show listener, you can save 10% off of all full featured plans. So go to directmailmac.com slash SBS and see how they can help your business grow. Our thanks to direct mail for sponsoring this episode. Next up is PDF Pen and PDF Pen Pro from smilesoftware.com slash podcast. We're always messing with PDFs, especially now that we're all sort of forced to be distributed. But let's face it, we've always been in PDF land. I'm using them constantly for anything, refinancing my house to everything with business. Contracts are signed that way. And speaking of contracts, yes, you can sign right in PDF Pen, but... 
with PDF pen, you also get built in DocuSign support. So if someone's using DocuSign or if you want to use DocuSign, that's built in now too. They've got this cool magnifier window so that you can zoom in on documents and really get to what you want. And now that PDF Pen and PDF Pen Pro 12.1 have arrived, you get a few new features, including page label support in multiple formats for your documents. And Pro users can even go a step further with the ability to add or edit page labels. So you get all this flexibility with what you can do with PDFs, how you can change things in them. Yes, you can change text in a PDF with PDF Pen. You want to check this out. So go to smilesoftware.com slash podcast. Check this out. You're going to love it. I love it. I use it every day. I was using it just before we did the show here. So go check it out. Smilesoftware.com slash podcast. And our thanks to Smile and PDF Pen for sponsoring this episode. All right, Shannon, I am very excited to get to this interview here. Learn Me how too. I can prevent cash leakage and all that. Anything else that we need to go through, my friend, before we do that? I don't think so. I'm, I'm ready to small business. Oh, you're ready to small business. He is ready to small business, and he is Shannon Jean. I am ready to small business, and I am Dave Hamilton. And this is the Small Business Show. Uh, now, as I have a lot of years under my belt, um, over time I have learned that simplicity is king. If you don't, if you don't have a product or a platform that can be explained within a couple of minutes and, and a proverbial elevator speech, you have a difficult time finding an audience. And I think that is going to become true more and more and more because everything that we consume nowadays as, as, as humans are sound bites, um, you know, very, very short form uh, media and, and, and so on. Headlines, I, my, my, my favorite saying is, is the attention span of a fruit fly. And um, that's, that's, that's a reality that we're dealing with. And, and you know, going at product design or going at a building a value proposition from a perspective of it's got to be complicated otherwise it's not good has for me proven to be the completely wrong approach keep it simple keep it digestible and get the the the, the, the key things right Hey, Dave, you know, we talk about cash on this show all the time. You know, it, it's really the lifeblood of every small business, right? Because you can even over profit sometimes, right? You run right. out of cash, you're, you're really in trouble. Oh, you need, uh, yeah, cash has to come first because if you don't have yeah. it, then profits are, you won't get to profits. You're done. Yeah, yeah. you're not going to make it to, to the next day. No. And along with that is also having enough data to, to manage those cash uh, decisions and how you handle your cash flow and stuff. So it's, you know, Capturing the data, managing the cash, critically important. So we're always looking at new tools and techniques to help us understand what's going on with our cash situation. In my business, I know you do the same thing. Tools that help us you know, plan for our cash needs and make decisions. Uh, today, we're going to get joined by uh, Guido Schultz, Guido that Schultz, is going I to tell is, us. That's right. You got it. Sorry, uh, that's easy for you to say. He'll tell us. That's <laughs> and, right. That's it. And uh, Guido is the CEO of uh, Bento for Business, a service that's built around uh, helping small businesses manage their expenses. And Guido, thank you so much. Uh, we're so glad to have you with us today. Thanks for having me. Yeah, that's, that's great. I'm, I'm really interested in learning. I spent a lot of time on your website looking at your different services, and uh, I've, I've got a bunch of questions. So, but before we get to talk about Bento, let's talk about your background a little bit. Um, I, looking at your LinkedIn profile, you know, I see a, a quite a bit of experience in the payments and finance fields. And so how did you find yourself in this industry and what led you to Bento for Business uh, when you became CEO in 2019? So when I was about eight years old, I figured I'm either going to go into payments or I'm going to become an astronaut. <laughs> I love so, that. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I don't think any kid will ever have that, yeah. that thought process. 
Um, I more or less, as, as I think many people do, I stumbled upon uh, payments. Uh, I have about 20 years of experience in payments. And I started working for an international business to business uh, uh, currency transfer business in uh, Washington, D.C. Um, in, in around 2000. And what attracted me to that business originally was since uh, I have an international background, I was, I was born and raised in Germany, um, I, I was attracted to the, the, the global outlook of that business and, and having to deal with you know, companies all around the world. So I, I came in on a completely different track. And payments were really an afterthought in there, although they were the, the, the main product of the organization. And uh, over time, I realized that uh, payments are really a, uh, a good translation for what business is all about in general. I mean, uh, it, business is always connected to some sort of revenue generation, moving of money, and payments are the vehicle that, that, that keeps that environment running. And they're a very good barometer when it comes to, you know, how does business work? Uh, what are the efficiencies or inefficiencies within businesses? And you get a really good understanding and overview over how the world works and, and, and how revenue is generated and, and what businesses are facing. So um, you know, as a secondary benefit, I became quite fascinated with payments and have been stuck to that ever since. Yeah, that's great. It, it it does sum it up nicely. And and payments are just everywhere. You know, it, yep. everyone seeming to want to be in that business, you know, PayPal, Square, different, I mean, on and on and on. Uh, and uh, it, you're right. It, it does really track what's going on, you know, with, with all these businesses. And as I was on your website, one of the things that I, I was looking, of course, at the about page, and there was a statement that I really uh, liked and, and impressed me. And that, that was... Uh, small businesses build American communities. Our tools are designed for you, not scaled down versions of products uh, for huge corporations. So, and I wanted to ask, why is this important to Bento to say that? And why is it important for small business owners that that are looking at your services? That's actually a, a good segue into, and I, I, don't, I don't think I quite answered your initial question as to how did I end up at Bento and, and what attracted me to Bento. So, that that actually uh, is one of the deciding factors or was one of the deciding factors for me joining Bento was that clear mission statement to say, we're a platform, we're not for enterprise business, we're for small to medium sized businesses, we're going to concentrate exactly on what's important to them and build a platform that will be tailor made for them to, to consume. And really what that means is, is, is Bento as a platform is... Um, yeah, incredibly flexible in, in how you use it, but it's also very easy and intuitive to use. You don't need any ancillary systems. It, it, it doesn't have to hook into any accounting systems. It can stand on its own legs and it doesn't require any software to be installed. It doesn't require any technical knowledge. It's just a tool that you can use out of the box to improve your cash flow as a small business. Mm. And that focus um, is, is, is very, oh, it was very dear to my heart because I've seen time over time, again, everybody in payments and in many other industries always flocks towards acquiring these giant accounts, helping giant businesses that, that can help themselves, quite frankly. And oftentimes, smaller businesses are left to the wayside or are left to consume some sort of discontented or uh, not quite so well thought through version of uh, a product that's, in general, always designed for the largest use case. And, and Bento isn't that. And that was very attractive to me. Yeah, I love that. I mean, I, I do often feel, you know, I've always had this kind of outsider mentality. And I think that has actually served me well as a small business owner, because you kind of makes you scrappy and you kind of have to feel like you have to fight, you know, to get to get heard and that kind of thing. So having your company uh, present themselves like that, I think is just a winning message to, uh, you know, small business owners like me, at least. It's great. So let, let's talk about the services. Uh, why do small business owners need your help? 
They do need our help. And let me put this into context with the larger environment of cash management. Uh, one statistical fact that, that, that really struck me, uh, when I, when I joined Bento, it, it was buried somewhere in, in, uh, Bento's materials, marketing materials, actually, but it really, it really drove a point home for me was that in 80% of small business bankruptcies, the leading cause for, for it getting there is actually cash mismanagement rather than a business model that's not viable, wouldn't generate enough revenue and so on. It's really in how small businesses handle or don't handle their cash. And that's where we come in. So our platform is an, a, you could call it an expense management platform, but it's really a spend management platform because we manage spend before it actually happens. And the way that works has three main um, building blocks. So you have, on one hand, you have an administrator uh, that can be the owner, or if it's a little bit larger organization and you have a delineated finance management function, it could be the CFO or accounts payable manager, whoever. I mean, it, it's it, it, the, the administration function is very easy to use. That person sets up a DDA account with Bento. They fund that account and connected to that account are debit cards. They can be virtual or they can be physical. And those debit cards are customizable on the fly. It's, it's a very easy interface. You can set up and, and have uh, three dimensions in, in, in terms of how you can set up controls on these cards. So you can control by spend levels, the amounts that can be spent at a given time period by um, when you can spend. So you can choose this card is active from Monday through Friday or 24 seven or any other scenario, only one day per week, whichever way you want to set it up. And then, and this is the, the, the most distinguishing part of the platform. You can choose which merchant types wow. the card can actually spend. On. Oh, that's powerful. Wow. And, and that's, and that's, that's quite powerful. So you can build a, call it a kind of a purchasing card ad hoc that's completely customized to a specific use case. And why is that important? Because, uh, you know, many small businesses, let's say you have a, uh, an, an air conditioning business and you have, you know, five trucks out in the field and there is a foreman in, in each truck and, and two technicians and that truck needs to be kept running, right? It needs to be gassed up. Um, you might have a lunch allowance for those guys. Uh, and they might have to go and buy filters at Home Depot when they run out. Let's say that's, that's the, the use case scenario. You can specifically limit that car to become a fuel car plus um, meals plus um, home improvement stores. And then you have a very specific use case scenario in place. They won't be able to, to get a beer uh, on, on your bill. They won't be able to, to, to spend it anywhere else, but it empowers them. It allows them to, to work and work efficiently. And it puts a very stringent level of controls on where that money is going to be spent, when, where, and how. And that's, that's really the, the, the part where the, the platform saves a small to medium sized business the most money because, um, a lot of, you know, small business owners don't want to face that fact, but a lot of cash leakage happens due to an ill defined expense policy or, you know, somebody taking advantage of a company account. And, and, and this is really where the magic of the platform is and any declined uh, transaction due to the categorization that's outside of the parameters that you determine to be on that given card, we count as savings. So on the uh -huh. interface on the platform, you can see over time how your your savings are actually accumulating based on what would have been spent that hasn't been spent due to the card controls. Yeah, that that's awesome. I mean, b knowing exactly where these folks are, you know going to be able to use the funds and how they're going to be able to do that seems like uh, it could really add up to some big savings. 
I, I like it, it, I like it, the term, and I'm sure it's common in businesses where this is a scenario. Is that term cash leakage? Uh, that's <laughs> that's a powerful term. You mentioned that to any small business owner, and you've got their attention. You certainly got mine. I was like, oh, that's a that's an interesting <laughs> thing to think about, right? So yeah, yeah. cash yeah. leakage. I like it. Yeah. But I, I will comment one technology once again ruining everything where you can't get a beer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you can get a beer, just not on the company's time. You gotta pay for it, right? <laughs> That's yeah. Right. yeah. I That's actually weird. I actually have a funny anecdote there. So a, a new client of ours, uh, it's a, a good mid sized company. So they have a lot of these cards in the field now with us and, and the the um CFO let us know how much they like the platform and, and their story was they said, Well, you know, we had about $150,000 in expenses before using the platform that has gone down to about half that. So wow. we had massive cash leakage to, to, to stick with that word every month. And the funny anecdote is, is our CEO, which the, the CFO set up the card for the C, uh, CEO as well, tried to buy donuts and wasn't authorized to buy donuts, <laughs> so he got declined from buying donuts <laughs> because his controls were stringent. <laughs> yeah. Hey, they, you know, the, like the, the card doesn't know. The card just knows what it's told. That's it. The, the card knows what it's told. Yeah. So that was, yeah. it was, I mean, of course, that goes a little bit far, but it, it, sure. it, was, it, it, it um, put a, a, a kind of a smile on our faces. But but again, as you can see, I mean, there, there are real world, real world scenarios where these companies are actually cutting their spend down in half. Yeah. And, and many amazing. companies don't want to face that. I mean, sometimes it seems to be a little bit of an uncomfortable uh, topic even. Yeah. They don't want to really confront their 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 employees. And, and the beauty of the platform is the platform handles that for you. You don't have to have that difficult conversation. You don't have to reconcile expenses after the fact. The card will make that decision for you and uh, it'll protect you right from the get-go. Well, like, yeah, like yeah, you I, said, if somebody has a valid expense, like the CEO wanted to buy donuts for the staff, I'm presuming for the staff, of course, uh, then, you know, then that can be addressed, right? But but yeah. in, instead of it being addressed after the fact, it's being addressed before the fact. And that's, that's huge. True. Yeah. yeah. That's and, and I imagine that it's a huge... Uh, uh, I mean, it relieves a lot of pressure from HR or your accounting department that's always having to kind of go a after the fact and pick up the pieces and solve these problems like, hey, what is this? And hey, what is that? You know, they, they must love it. Absolutely. And then that's that's where the whole uh, part of reconciliation comes into play. So um, the platform also have a, has a mobile app. In fact, we just um, released a, a brand new version of the mobile app this week. So it's it's nice. it's brand brand new gives you full access to all the the platform functionality, and um, you know if you're out in the field you can just take a picture of your uh, receipt right there and that gets attached to the transaction. So there are no expense reports to be done. Nobody has to use their personal cards. There's there's no credit exposure in any way, shape, or form. And on top of that, the platform uh, nicely integrates with uh, most of the small to medium sized business accounting platforms out there. Mm. So you can just upload uh, your reconciliation right into the accounting platform and it takes that entire headache of, you know, hunting people down for their receipts and taking three months to close out your books and so on. It takes all of that away. Yeah, that, that, that's great. It, uh one of the things I was thinking about when I was looking on your site, I mean, is there a typical time in the lifespan of a, of a small to medium business that, you know, where they would kind of gravitate towards you? Is it like when they're growing fast, when their finances start to have problems or do, are you just getting people at all different uh, uh, points on, on the lifespan? We are getting them all across. So there are some uh, tech savvy startup businesses that are using us from day one and we grow with them, which, which is actually a great scenario to see. You can see how you know, a bus businesses spend behavior changes over time as they grow and, and, and the entire environment grows with them. And um, then we have also companies that are getting to that point where they say, well, wait a second, we have tens of thousands of dollars in expenses. We're still a small business, but we have to do something about managing those. And then we, we have to put controls in place and, and we give them that out of the box, all in one solution. So it, it really spans the gamut. 
what we tend to see is where where the the solution becomes immediately apparent is if there is and I mentioned that beforehand if there is a delineated financial management sometimes owner operators sniff out that uh, solution themselves and they get it uh if you're talking to somebody who's an accounts payable manager or an accountant or a CFO of a small company, they immediately get it. I mean, for them, that's sure. that, that's a no-brainer. There, there's not much explanation needed. Um, they can get on the platform. They can use the platform pretty much intuitively, and they will ex- immediately see the potential in it. So it's it's more a question of who is your audience and how do you present the value of the, the, the platform? And, and, and really the easiest audience is, is that profile. Yeah, that's great. And I, I was looking at the pricing to it. I, I mean, it seems very reasonable. I mean, you have a free uh, level, you know, with a couple of cards that somebody could use this thing. And uh, it, it's really cool. I think, I think yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's, it's just nominal. Solution. Yeah, yeah, we just we just cover our development expenses uh, partially with with the, the nominal fee, so that's not really a, a, a big that's revenue great. generator for us. Yeah. So, are there obstacles that you found to you know? Uh, I mean, when a customer, when a business owner looks at the service, and uh, what what reasons are they giving? Well, I don't think I'm you know I'm, why I wouldn't use it. I mean, is there obstacles that you've uh, come up with that, that you've had to overcome? Uh Generally, no. I mean, once yeah. we when, once we are able to demonstrate the platform, we don't run into any obstacles. The only um, objection, uh, and and I, I actually just had a conversation uh, with with some of our salespeople about that. The only objection that we run into, and I mentioned that beforehand, is that sometimes um, it seems to be an uncomfortable. A conversation for business owners to actually put controls in place because that implies that there might be a problem there might uh, be yeah. a challenge lack, with that. lack they, of trust lack of trust and they don't they don't really want to face that uh th- there can be that scenario where people say oh you know we're, we're five people and they're all family i don't have i don't i don't need spend controls i i trust everyone implicitly but uh, you know that company three years from now might be twenty five people, and they're not all family. And uh, you know sometimes even family does things. Yeah, that of course, it could be worse. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it can be worse, like you said. Yeah, because yeah, they know that you don't want to have the 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 awkward conversation. Yeah, that's right. exactly, exactly. So sometimes people are standoffish because they don't want to even breach that subject. But once they do, and they realize that they're they're precluding a potentially uncomfortable conversation, then they open up. But that's uh, if if there's any. Any kind of uh, rejection for us, it's usually around that. Yeah, I, I like the way you you uh, created the framework around it too, uh, which you could say, "Hey, we're going to implement this now for future growth. It's really going to help us." I know I trust everybody here in the room, but we're gonna. It'll be great going forward. I think that's a great way to to pitch it. Good good habits are easy to grow, but they're hard to implement once the company has uh, adopted a, a number of bad habits. That, that's, yeah, that, that's that's a that's that's a real truth, and sure. I've seen that not not only in in cash management, but in in, in many other areas of, of of business management. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Yeah. So w- when you came on board uh, as CEO last year for for Bento, was there anything that surprised you about the business or how it worked or uh, coming in from the outside? Um, I was. Uh, I wouldn't say surprised me because I had um, a pretty ample exposure to you know, the key individuals in the organization before I joined. Um, what pleasantly surprised me was the uh, the, the culture of the organization. Um, I think this, this, this whole aspect of serving small businesses, trying to bring real value add to our clients, uh, it permeates throughout the organization. Uh, it's a it's a great company to work for and work with and to serve. Um, the 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 individuals are very caring. Uh, the company culture is very inclusive. Uh, we're a very diverse group of people, and um, I think the, the way we handle our clients and and then the way way we present ourselves to the world definitely is fueled by that um, diverse and inclusive environment. And um, 
yeah, I can only say I'm 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 blessed to be there. Right. I, I I love every minute of it. I think we have a, a ton of opportunity. And I also have to mention at this point uh, Farhan Ahmad. He's the the founder of the organization. So this platform is really his brainchild, and he has definitely built something amazing here. He's still with us. He's he's fully engaged in the business. Uh, he still works on on furthering and improving our product every day, and uh, works on strategy uh, hand in hand with me. And uh, it was great to see that that he had that. Um, aha moment where he realized he said you know i've taken this company I've, I've i've built this vision and now i need somebody with expansive gtm and scaling experience to to bring this to the next level and he's just uh, embraced me with open arms and it, it just has been a great experience for me that's wonderful and that's a hard thing as a as a founder to come to that realization that oh uh, you know you kind of have to fire yourself right <laughs> and 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 go maybe into another role but bring someone else in that has the that additional experience absolutely it can't be easy and he has yeah. done that with the utmost level of graciousness i mean just amazing that's great speaks right? to his character uh, it speaks yeah. to your value too I mean, it, yeah. it like he wouldn't be comfortable with this if he didn't trust you. So there you go. Well, you know, and we've had a lot of people in the payments business on this show over the years. And and one thing that stuck out as I was thinking about this interview, it, it, it's similar uh, to some of the, the messaging you're talking about as like when we had Bill Reddy, he's the, you know, was the COO of PayPal at, at the time on the show. And you guys have taken what some people could consider, oh, it's kind of a boring, you know, payments. Nobody gets excited about it. But you've created something exciting around it in a, in a culture that is uh, makes, you know, a, a great team and all that stuff. So I, I think that's terrific. I love that. The, the payment really is just the vehicle, right? The payment in yeah. its own right is, is a, a well-defined protocol. And that's utterly boring. I mean, there, there are some people out there, and to me, they're freaks, that, uh, <laughs> that get really involved in, in, into, in, in the finer aspects of that and, and, and bless them because they're, much, they're very much needed, right? There's uh, a whole host that, that a normal consumer doesn't see of compliance and, and regulatory complexity and so on. That's all around there. And there are people that are deeply, deeply immersed in that. But ultimately, to me, as a as a, a brand builder and and uh, a more commercial person, that's that's the boring aspect. To me, the interesting part is, and I think this is where you see a differentiation between service providers and and true solution providers and and, and innovators in this space. There are a lot of pain points around payments and. Delivering the platform around solving these pain points and connecting these disparaging odds and ends within payments, that's where the creativity is. And that's where the excitement is, for me at least. Yeah. Oh, that's great. So one question we ask every guest that comes on the show is all, all about mistakes. And, and, and I'm going to couch this a little different for you because your experience is a little, little different. So we like talking about mistakes because they teach us so much. Uh, I, I know I'm sure I've made the most out of the three of us that are on this show right now. Um, <laughs> what, what would you say is is your best mistake? You know, something that stuck with you over the years uh, and and taught you a lesson as you as you built your career. I, this is where I, I put you on the spot. <laughs> thinking about that long and hard, I don't think it's it's one singular mistake i think it's it's a a, a mistaken outlook um, earlier in my career i always thought that value add um was oh, and this is hard to express but i'll i'll, I'll give it my best best sure. shot here uh, value add is is um an analogous to complication Meaning that more is better. That adding more functionality, um, taking account of every possible use case, making it as broad as possible, uh, making the, the the solution seem as intelligent as possible, uh, was the, the 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 secret to success. And uh, now, as I have a lot of years under my belt. Um, over time, I have learned that simplicity is king, 
Mm. If you don't, if you don't have a product or a platform that can be explained within a couple of minutes and and a proverbial elevator speech, you have a difficult time finding an audience. And I think that is going to become true more and more and more because everything that we consume nowadays as as, as humans are sound bites, um, yeah. you know, very very short form. Uh, media and, and, and so on. <laughs> yeah. Headlines. Uh, yeah. my, my, my favorite saying is, is the attention span of a fruit fly. Yeah. And um, that's, that's, that's a reality that we're dealing with. And, and, you know, going at product design or going at a building a value proposition from a perspective of it's got to be complicated. Otherwise, it's not good. Mm has for me proven to be the completely wrong approach keep it simple keep it digestible and get the 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 the, the key things right in in the client experience or in in the offering uh that you put on somebody's table and that'll be the road to success it's it's I about it's yeah, about the, the 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 key you know value proposition at the center of your solution if that's not right all the window dressing is not going to fix it I think that's great advice. And I think you guys have done that with with the Bento when I when I was looking at your site and I'm like, well, this seems so simple, but it's it's such it's like you have this aha moment like, wow, th- this is crazy how it could, you know, save you money and make things, you know, better. So, that that's Yeah, it, it is it yeah. is deceptively simple. So there's yeah. a lot of technology behind it and it was very difficult to build, but the the to to the client it's it's a no brainer it's simple yeah. it's 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 a few clicks here and there and and all of a sudden I've saved you know on, on average our clients save about fifteen percent on on their spend every month right. and and you just go well that wasn't much how how did this just happen but that's the ideal scenario right right you know? right makes sense so th- your your comment it's great and and I think there's some real valuable lessons in there and and it leads me into to to my next question you know. We are this soundbite culture, you know, and I, I blame the iPhone and Apple for it because they've destroyed our attention spans, <laughs> at least mine and my kids. Yeah. So, uh, you know, messaging and story, they uh, they do seem to be getting more important uh, to connect with customers. And, and I wanted to ask you, is that one of the reasons why you're here today? Have, have you found that podcasts are an effective way to connect with customers on a more personal level or on just a different level? Absolutely. I think, I mean, telling a story and, and, and there are two parts to that. I think you have to um, provide value add no matter if it's for your own gain or if, if it's for your audience's gain or, 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 or whoever benefits from it. Um, I think storytelling and, and this free form format of, 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 of being conversational is almost becoming a lost art. And the, the podcast format has given that slightly longer form communication protocol a new lease of li- on life. And it's just not possible to tell your entire story uh, in sound bites or, or, or three paragraphs. And, and I think, therefore, it's interesting and it's interesting to me and it's, it's probably interesting to your audience to, to, to get a little bit deeper and, and hear some of the stories behind somebody's success or failure and 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 hear it from the horse's mouth so to say and yeah i mean that's 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 a great reason to be on a podcast if there ever was one yeah we love it and and you know i started this because i just wanted to meet people and learn as much as i could (laughs) and and every week i always say i i always learn the most and now we have thousands of small business owners that get to to listen along so it's great Um, i love it so I have one final question for you, and uh, you seem like a person that's taken action and uh, in your life uh, over your your career. And we're big fans of action over you know over planning and falling in love with ideas. Is there one action item that you could tell you know recommend to our small business owner listeners that they could do? to help their business, uh, you know, related to your, maybe related to your expertise in the payment industry, something that you could leave them with. Absolutely. Um, be aware of where you're at in time and space. And what that means is as a business owner, you know, you need to know who your audience is. 
you need to know how well your service, value proposition, product, whatever it is that you sell, uh, matches that audience, the audience's use profile. And uh, then you need to know what the operating metrics of your own business are. And I can't overstress that. I see a lot of small businesses, they, they fly a little bit by the seat of their pants. So they, they say, well, I, I'm, I'm bringing clients on board. I'm making phone calls. I have phone calls coming in. I put this advertisement out there and people are calling me now. So I must be doing well. And it is extremely important to know, and this comes back to the, 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 the uh, beginning intro of this conversation, what is my cash flow? Yeah. How much do I make? Yeah. How much do I spend? Where do I spend it? And where does my money go? Because an expense is not necessarily a bad thing, but an expense is only a good thing if it goes towards either growing your business or satisfying one of your, your clients so that they come back and, and, and spend more with you. Ultimately, I mean, that's, that's the, the, the lifeblood of any organization is, is, is to, to become a, a, a positive revenue generating entity. And too many small businesses um, are not aware of where they're at and where they're going. So they can't really make a plan. They can model out different scenarios as to where they say, what happens if I lose my largest client? What is the impact? And how well will I be doing if that happens? Again, those are sometimes uncomfortable questions to answer, but it's much better to be able to answer them and have a plan and, and know where you stand if the you know, sometimes inevitable happens rather than just saying, oh, you know, I'm, 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 adding clients on some, I must be doing great and, right. and I'll worry about my finances later. No, you, that's, you, that's one of the biggest items. Yeah. When, when you started this and said, be aware of where you're at in time and space, I'm like, now we need something like to hang our hats on and you hit it. Where are your own businesses operating metrics? That is the key because it, like you said, it's so easy to focus on the things that you are choosing to do every day. That doesn't necessarily mean those are the things that matter the most for your business and zooming out and figuring out what the metrics are that you need to look at either day to day, week to week, month to month to make sure your business is growing and going forward. That's key. That's the, to me, that's the, the, the takeaway there. So thank you for that. That's Absolutely. Great. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. And, and take it, you know, from someone who's spent a large part of their life uh, flying by the seat of your pants, uh, to use your term, oh, yeah. <laughs> it is really good advice. That's me. Uh, Absolutely. That's it, why. It, yeah, it's that's difficult. <laughs> I mean, it's, it is very difficult, especially I, I'm a, I, I realized a long time ago, I'm a top line, you know, revenue generating person. And I, if I don't have a bottom line person helping me, I'm in big trouble. Uh, someone that can do the, 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 that planning and look at those metrics uh, because I often think, oh, as long as I keep growing sales, I'm going to be fine. <laughs> and I, that's not always the case. Yeah, it's true. It's true. Yeah. That, is, that is very true because, I mean, you have all these variables like customer acquisition cost. How much does it yeah. cost you to onboard somebody? And how much do you spend on, on, on keeping a, a customer happy? And oftentimes, if you have these metrics, it also equips you with uh, valuable information if you have to renegotiate terms with a customer uh, that you may have onboarded to say, oh, I just want this name. I want, I want this client. And, and then all of a sudden, you realize you're actually losing money uh, on, on that relationship. And if you know your metrics, you can go to that uh, client and say, hey, this is how it looks like. I'm losing money on you. So in order to create a win-win scenario for both of us, this has to change. And you, know, you would be surprised. Most people are actually quite amenable to that. Yeah. Plus you can show them the data. I, I think that's great. Yeah. Well, it, you know, Guido, thank you again for coming on the show. I think that, you know, Bento for Business, you have a really unique and uh, uh, a solution that could be really helpful for, you know, every business. What's the best way for our listeners to connect with you and to learn more about Bento for Business? So they should definitely visit us on the web. We're actually in the in the process of, of rolling out a new website. It's about a month away. So come back often. It's uh, bentoforbusiness.com. And if any uh, of your listeners have any direct questions, uh, my email address is guido, G U 
I D O at bento for business.com. Awesome. That's awesome. Thanks again. I, you know, we, I, we've learned a lot and you've taken, like you said, a, a, a subject that can be not as exciting, but built a, a real great message around it and a great product. So thank you again. Thank you. It was a pleasure being on. Thank you. What a fascinating business, man. I, I, it is, I, you know, that whole cash leakage thing, like that resonated with me so much. I, you well, know, that's, that's the story, right? That's I mean, it. what a great way to, uh, uh, you know, a, a metaphor to use yeah. on why you need our, why you use our service. And, it, you know, it, it's going to pay for itself because you're going to be able to tighten up all these things. And, uh, uh, the minute I was at their website, like I said oh, during the interview, and I saw the process and I was just like, oh, wow, I could yeah. use this, you know, 20 years ago. Of course, technology probably wasn't there, but uh, just seems so helpful. It's so helpful. Yeah. You know, I, I think it's it's great. I think it's great. I yeah, do. Good. I do have one piece of advice. And I hate to I, I, I probably should have done this in the middle of the show so that he could at least defend himself while he was here. Because Guido said, you know, we have a new we're in the process of launching a new website. I feel like that's 100 percent true. 100 percent of the time of 100 percent of all small businesses or all businesses. True. And and I don't know that it's all that worthwhile to tell people that. Like just launch it. Yeah, you're interested in. Tech. Well, yeah, because I mean, you might think like I mean, I thought their website was awesome. Yeah, I did but too. I think what happens as, right. as, as when we're on? If as your, it's your site, right? It's Guido's totally. site now, right? Under yep. his thing. So he's on it probably all the time, and so he's thinking, oh, I can't wait for we have this new stuff on here where it was just new to me yesterday. So uh, yeah, but, but a great guy. No, with, great guy. Yeah, but you're awesome right. That's the thing is, you, you know, it's just like telling customers we have a new product coming out. It's like, well, yes. or a new version of that coming up. Well, then I'll wait. Should no, I not get, yeah, that's Don't it, yeah. wait. Like, don't yeah. wait. We've got you covered. This website's fine. The next one's also going to be fine. Like, just, it'll be there when you see it. There you go. Yeah. 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 That's great. I, I love having them on the show. Yeah, and, good stuff. Because we don't connect with a lot of, of you know, CEOs, we tend to talk to founders yeah. and that kind of, and marketing folks. So it's great to get that different take on things. And he had some great advice for for all of us. Yeah. Um, some advice I'd like to give our listeners is please go leave us a five star review uh, on the podcast choice of or the podcast directory of your choice, <laughs> and uh, you can link to any of those at businessshow.co slash reviews. We would love your help. It only takes a few minutes and it really makes a big impact on how many people get to get this advice from people like Guido. Yeah, exactly. All right, folks. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. Thanks for listening. Let us know what you think. Feedback at businessshow.co. Of course, check out our sponsors, directmailmac.com slash SBS and smilesoftware.com slash SBS. Thanks so much for listening. Keep living that charmed life. We'll see you next time.